Uh, greetings, everybody. Now remember, this is uh, these are duplicate studies. Uh, I'm posting these under Genesis, but on the pl Genesis playlist. But they're already on the Dreams and Vision playlist, so it's it's the same study. I'm just redoing it. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right, take care. Greetings, everybody. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. Turn your King James Bible to Genesis chapter 37. Uh, this is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This is the continuation of the Dreams and Vision series. I'm also reposting the same videos, uh, just a different name, under a different name to the uh, my Genesis series. So if you see the uh, same thing posted twice, you'll know. I mean, you may not want to listen to it twice, but then again, you never know. Um, all right, so Genesis chapter 37. All right, let's go. Genesis 37 and verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. So here it is. Jacob, whose name was changed by the Lord to Israel, uh, he's living in the land the land of Canaan, where, you know, the Canaanites were. And uh, these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, Zilpah and Bilhah were um, sort of like maidservants, you know. Some Bible studies will lie and say, oh, they were slaves. No, they were, you know, they were basically servants for their, um, for uh, Leah and Rachel. And then uh, he had uh, children with them. Um, Jacob must have been a really good-looking guy, you know. But uh, have having children by four different women, you better believe the kids are all jockeying for position, you know. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. You know, every time I read this, a coat of many colors, you know what I think of? Plaid. You know, the Scots use uh, plaid as their uh, family kind of a marking crest or whatever. I don't know what exactly you would call it, but a coat of many colors. That's what I think. I think of plaid. Every time I read this, I think of plaid. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Yeah, a lot of guys think, uh, oh, yeah, man, having multiple wives. Oh, that's, boy, that's a real fantasy there. I don't think so. It sounds like a nightmare because all the kids are fighting each other and I don't know. Well, look at uh, King David. One of King David's own sons, um, Absalom, which I did a Bible study on, wanted to be king so bad that he tried to kill his father. Yeah. Yeah, that's a real uh, that's a real fantasy having a lot of wives, isn't it? Lots and lots and lots of trouble. No, thank you. Uh, 
Most guys have enough trouble trying to keep one wife happy. More or less, four. No, thank you. So, his brethren didn't like Joseph and couldn't talk nicely to him. Now remember, Joseph is uh, the one that goes to Egypt and becomes the, uh, what is it, the second or third ruler in all of Egypt. You know, that's pretty powerful, right? Verse 5. Ah, here's the dream. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. Oh yeah, well, we hate you, but now that you told us a dream, we hate you even more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. Now, what are sheaves? Well, you know, when you're growing wheat, you cut the, uh, the sheaves down, and then you got to separate the, um, the plant from the stalk of the grains and then you got to set once you separate the grains you got to separate the chaff from the uh, the wheat berries the kernels um, I know us city folks uh, you know oh where does wheat come from oh uh, the grocery store Kroger's Safeway uh, you know Walmart Publix Target yeah I don't think so but um, you cut down the sheaf, and then you bind them into bundles. Then you tie them up. And uh, perhaps you've heard that Bible song. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we will come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves. I know. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But who did the Lord say that uh, was the bread of life? Yeah, Christ. Christ was the bread of life. And who did he come for? Christ said he came for Israel. So what are these sheaves? Symbolic of bread. In Matthew 15, 24, but he, Jesus, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, if you've been listening to this uh, series, you know that Jesus is the bread of life. So, let's go back to Genesis 37 and verse 7. All right, so... Joseph says, For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. Now, what does obeisance mean? Well, it's from uh, the same root word, obey, but it basically, obeisance means to bow down you know, as a symbol of respect. Verse 8. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? You know, are you going to be our ruler? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? You know what the word dominion uh, comes from the same root word for dominate or domination. Dominion. Or shalt thou indeed had dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Well, yeah, we hated you. Now we hate you more. Now we hate you even, even more. Oh, yeah. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Listen carefully. Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Huh, what's, what is the meaning of this? Hmm. Verse 10. 
And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him. His father rebuked him. Here it is, Israel, Jacob Israel, is rebuking Joseph his son, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? All right, Joseph had the dream, but Jacob Israel interpreted the dream. The sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And shall I, the sun, Jacob Israel, and thy mother, the moon, and thy brethren, the eleven stars, well, the eleven stars with Joseph is twelve, twelve stars, uh, the twelve tribes of Israel. Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? Huh. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. People just don't bother reading the Bible and then they wonder why they can't understand it. Well, I, Chaplain Bob, I read the old, uh, the New Testament, but I don't, I don't understand it. Did you ever read the old? Well, no, that's for the Jews. Well, what can I tell you? If you think, if you think it's for them, well, and not for you, well then, you know, James chapter 1 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask the Lord. I'm paraphrasing there, but, you know, when I first came to the Lord, that was the first thing I did. I got on my hands and knees and I asked the Lord, Please, Lord, help me to understand and don't, don't deceive me. Because I'd already been deceived by the Billy Grahams and the Baptist churches and, you know, and my opinion, he's honored my request. All right, so Revelation 12. Remember Joseph's dream, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars, plus Joseph is 12, right? Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, now, who is this woman? Personally, I think it's the church, Israel. That's my opinion. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. This is the exact interpretation that we had just read in Genesis 37, verse 9. Let's read it again. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me, and he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? Uh, yeah, dad, you will. That's going to happen in when, uh, go, when Joseph goes to Egypt. Yeah. Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared in heaven a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the church clothed with the sun, Israel and the moon, uh, under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, the twelve tribes of Israel. And she, being with child, cried, travailing a birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and, ten, and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail 
drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And if you ask me, that is when Herod sent the soldiers to kill all the children in Bethlehem under, what was it, two years old, trying to kill Christ. But Joseph was, um, and Mary, Joseph was warned to take Mary and the child in a dream to go to Egypt. See, the Bible interprets the Bible, if you let it. Well, the King James does. I don't know about the modern Bibles, but, uh, well, actually, I do. So, verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, obviously, that's Christ. Verse 6, And the woman, which is the church, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Twelve hundred and sixty days. Uh, I think that's the tribulation period. All right, let's go back. Let's leave Revelation 12. And, uh, you know, back to verse 10. So he says, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Now, his daddy rebuked him, but observed the saying, which means he's paying attention. Now, listen to this. If any of you are interested i did an entire bible study on the life of joseph it's in my playlist you know you click on my name takes you to the home page you go up towards the top center and it says playlist click playlist look around and you'll see joseph a study of forgiveness i mean you know here it is they sold joseph into slavery to the uh i think it was the sabaeans well, Ishmaelites, uh, I think they were Arabs. And the Arabs have been into slavery a long, long time. And uh, they took him and sold him to uh, Egypt. And uh, I think his name was Potiphar. He was the uh, captain of the guard for Pharaoh. Uh, you're talking of you know, the captain of the guard. That's like that's like the head of the Secret Service to, to President Trump or uh, the head of the Queen's Guards to the Queen of England. You know, I mean, that's a pretty high-ranking position there. Um, and that is, trust me, you're going to put your most trusted people in those kind of positions. Now, from what I understand, the... Um, there was a group of people called the Hiskos, H Y K H K Y S O S, Hiskos. They were Semitic cousins to the Israelites, and they were in charge of the area of Egypt at this particular time. Some people will say, well, you know, Egypt's two different countries. You got northern Egypt, and then you got southern Egypt. Now, I know for the fact that the Hiskos were in charge of northern Egypt. They were in charge of northern Egypt for sure. Uh, they rode in on their chariots and they conquered it. And that was who Joseph was uh, sold into slavery to. And uh, when he got his wife, I uh, forget her name, but uh, she was the daughter of the pre one of the priests, uh, it's they I think they were of Hebrew stock you know uh, the fake Bible scholars will want you to think that the Egyptians were the sons of Ham and then Joseph married the children of Ham and they're a bunch of mongrels and it doesn't matter who you marry you know that's what they want you to believe you know it kills me 
people will spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars for purebred dogs they'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on purebred cattle there's people that will spend millions of dollars on thoroughbred horses and that there's people who say it doesn't matter who your son and daughter marries really really doesn't matter you know you know uh Abraham and Isaac warned their children, don't take wives of the children of Canaan, the Canaanites. Uh, it kills me. So, so his father observed the saying. In other words, his father was paying attention to this dream. Verse 12. Genesis 37, verse 12. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to them, Go, I pray thee, and see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale to Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? You know, what are you looking for? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed thence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when, he had, uh, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. So, uh, and they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. Now Reuben was the firstborn. He was the oldest. You know? Uh, Reuben had more sense than uh, all the rest of them, you know? And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites, Ishmaelites, I was right, okay, you got to remember a lot of the stuff I'm doing from memory. Behold, a com company of Ishmaelites, Arabs, came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brethren and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Ah, sounds like a good deal. Hey, let's sell him as a slave. This way we get rid of him and we get money. Sounds like a win-win, huh? And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him, sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Ah. 
So, Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Uh, Christ was sold for 30. Verse 29. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I whither and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of a kid of the goats, and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat, an evil beast hath devoured him, and Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned, mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. So, uh, huh, it says here daughters. So evidently there was more than one. I only know of one daughter, Dinah. So evidently there was more than one. Or maybe it was daughters from the sons. I don't know. All right, so, and thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Captain of the guard. That's a very high-ranking position. So, um, like I say, if you're interested in the rest of the story, hit my playlist and look up Joseph, A Study in Forgiveness. I mean, you know, think about it. The brethren sold him into slavery. He goes to Egypt. Um, has a lot of problems. And then he ends up being the third, second or third highest person in Egypt. And then there's a famine. And his brethren go to Egypt because they heard that they have food. And can you imagine that? You know, how many years went by? Uh, you know, we don't even know. 20, 30 years go by? I don't know. And then there, uh, you know, Pharaoh, uh, Joseph is speaking to them, his brethren, through an interpreter. They don't recognize his voice. They don't recognize what he looks like. Um, you know, and they, uh, the prophecy of them bowing down to him was fulfilled. And you know what? Joseph forgave them. Forgiveness is a very, very important thing. Uh, and I'm a hypocrite. I admit it. I'm a hypocrite because it's, yeah, it's hard. Jesus in uh, the book of Matthew, verse 14 and 15, says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. What can people do to us that's worse than what we did to the Father? I know I've done a bunch of terrible things. And I am definitely not pre uh, happy about it. Uh, this is expressed in Luke 7.47, Jesus speaking. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loveth much. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loveth much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. 
Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 7, verse 36. We'll read that same story. And one of the Pharisees desired him, Jesus, that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor, which had two debtors. The one owed five hundred pence, and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and says, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say unto thee, Her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth lit little." And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Thy faith hath saved thee. Our righteousness is in our faith. And I did that in a previous recent study. So, all right, um, that was uh, Joseph's dream. And he's going to have another one really, really soon. So stay tuned. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain, from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.